Hello, good evening, and welcome to our third uh, More Money Makeover session. Uh, tonight, we're talking KPIs, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, actually, it is. And I, I shall go into more detail uh, as, we, as we start, which will be in just a couple of minutes, because I'm going to hang around um, before I start for a few minutes just to see um, if anyone's going to um, pop on live. So if you're watching this in the replay, um, then feel free to zoom ahead a few minutes. Um, while we're waiting, what do you think of my Christmassy theme? Um, this was, I use um, BeLive um, for my Facebook Lives and um, they've provided cr different Christmas themes and and you can even add your own snow um, and different levels of snow. So uh, I'm very excited. Um, I hope you don't find it too distracting, but I couldn't resist. We're so close to Christmas after all. Um, I had to um, to make it a bit Christmassy. I was actually um, planning on setting up uh, in a different place uh, this evening so that you could see our Christmas decorations instead of the usual uh, drinks cabinet in the background. Um, but I couldn't work out how to do it because our decorations, we've got a massive kind of um, window along the back wall um, and I couldn't work how to do it without getting all sorts of weird reflections. So um, because it, especially because it's dark here, um, I thought it might look a bit weird. So I gave up. But uh, We'll try. We'll try. Um, so um, while I wait, before I um, get started, I'm just going to share this into my Facebook group. Um, so let's have a look. There I am. And I'm going to share. Oops. Into my group. There we go. That's just sharing across. And OK, I think I'm going to make a start. We've waited a couple of minutes. Um, so today uh, I'm talking to you. Let's actually let's start first by talking about the first two weeks. So the whole of this month um, is my more money makeover set. Um, and it, the reason I've chosen this kind of theme um, is because um, back in November, um, I surveyed uh, my email list and I was asking all sorts of questions. Um, but in particular, around kind of challenges they were facing and types of content they'd be interested um, in seeing more of. And one theme um, that cropped up again and again um, was people um, wanting um, to know how to make more money, how to increase their income, um, how to um, essentially make more money. And um, of course, let's face it, we all want that. And so it seemed a good basis um, for my content in December, especially um, considering that we're leading now um, into the new year. And it's a time when we all naturally start to kind of think ahead, set goals, um, think about what we want to achieve in the following year. You know, we all set New Year's resolutions and all that kind of stuff. So this seemed like the perfect time um, to create content around how you can go into 2018 um, as prepared and ready as possible to have a great year and to earn more money. Um, so in the first um, week of December, we covered goal setting um, because that is the basis. It, you know, you need to set goals. You need to know where it is you're actually heading, what it is you're trying to achieve, because that's what that's what's going to give you focus um, in your day to day um, business activities. Hello to whoever's joined live. Lovely to see you. Um, do say hey in the comments. Um, and then secondly, uh, last week we talked about planning and how to create your business plan. So once you've created your goals and you've set your goals, um, you need to know how you're going to achieve them, how you're actually going to get there. Um, so um, 
basically by creating a business plan. Um, so that was last week. And now this week um, is all about KPIs. And if you're not too sure what those are, don't worry, I'm going to go um, into more detail. Um, but essentially this week is all about once you've got your goals and you've got your plan, how you stay on track and how you keep yourself going in the right direction. Um, so with that, let's dive in. Um, I've created a few slides, which I am going to share with you. Um, I've discovered that whenever I try and go into actual presentation mode, um, people can't see the slides. Um, so I shall leave it as they are um, like that um, so that I don't lose you. Um, so let's start. So KPRs, KPIs, what are they and how can you use them? Um, so this is for you and if you've watched my previous couple of workshops you will see a theme here um, because each of these workshops is aimed at the same people so this is for you if you're just getting started with your online business um, and you're still working a nine to five um, and it's worth also saying this is for you if you haven't even started your online business yet but it's something that you want to do and you've been thinking about doing um, because this is all giving you the kind of foundations to really start strong um, this is also for you if you feel like you're lacking direction, you're busy all the time, but you never seem to achieve anything. And that is what so often comes when we haven't set goals, when we haven't actually created a plan um, and when we're not measuring our success and checking that we're staying on the right track. And lastly, this is for you if you are determined that 2018 is going to be your year and you want to get off to a great start. So here's what we're going to be talking about this evening. First of all, what are KPIs? Um, why do you need them? And then how you can set them for your own business. So let's start with the, um, the biggest question. What is a KPI? Um, now, if you've ever worked in um, corporate, chances are you already know the answer to this because KPIs are the bread and butter um, of corporate. Um, they stand for Key Performance Indicator. And essentially, um, they are the measures that you use um, to monitor your progress um, towards your goals. Um, so in corporate, um, you may be set objectives and they will be based on the business KPIs. OK, if you have any questions, whether you're watching this live or in the replay, do let me know. Um, I'll keep checking the comments. And after this is finished, I'll come back and check the comments. Um, I'm also doing a QA and a um, tomorrow night. Um, so um, I'll be happy, happy to answer any questions there as well. OK, so now we know what a KPI is. Let's talk more about what they're actually for. Um, so there's three key reasons that you set KPIs. Um, as I've already mentioned, the first is to monitor your progress. So um, this is basically your way of checking um, whether you are on course to hit your goals. Um, the second is to manage your performance. So I'm going to give you an example. So say, for example, um, and if, by the way, um, my Monday's blog post is all about this as well. Um, so if you want more detail, if you want, if you work better when you've got everything there written down in front of you, um, it's it goes into a lot of detail. There's plenty of examples. So go and check out Monday's post um, that is on my blog, uh, collectroomhead.com. So let me talk about an example here. So your KPI. So basically, um, let's say, for example, um, one of the things that you're measuring um, in your business is um, the number of um, blog views that you get per month. OK, um, so. Blog views per month is going to by checking your blog views per month, um, say you've set a, a, a target to reach a thousand views per month. By checking your by setting that as a KPI, it allows you to monitor your progress. It allows you to see how close or how far you are from hitting that goal. Um, secondly, it allows you to actually manage your performance. And by that, I mean, it allows you to identify um, where you might be going wrong. If you're not hitting your goal and if you're not um, like on track to, to hit your goal, um, then by measuring certain things, you're able to see why. So in my post on Monday, I gave the example of um, someone trying to build their email list. And um, so, for example, so they 
basically want to grow their email list, let's say, um, by 100 people in a month. And so they create a uh, blog post. Uh, and in that blog post, they offer a free content upgrade, which people need to sign up to the email list um, in order to receive. Um, so people sign up through the blog post. Um, that then takes them to a landing page um, where they then so they click through from the blog post to a landing page and then they put in their details and they become a subscriber. Now, um, the key metric there would be, of course, your number of subscribers. So if you're trying to build your email list by 100 people, you need to measure how many people are on your email list. But that doesn't tell you everything. Um, it will tell you whether you're hitting your goal or not, but it won't tell you anything else. And if you're not hitting your goal, just measuring that won't tell you why. However, if you also measure the number of people who are looking at your blog post, then the number of people who are clicking from your blog post through to your landing page, and then the number of people on the landing page who are actually putting their details in and signing up, that gives you the full journey. And using those numbers, you can work out where things are going wrong. So it may be that you're getting plenty of people onto the blog post. You're getting plenty of people reading it. But very few people are clicking from the blog post to the landing page. And it may be that once people are on the landing page, plenty of people are clicking through to sign up. So you therefore know that your problem area is actually the blog post itself and that whatever for whatever reason, you're not communicating the value of your content upgrade well enough. Um, and so by measuring different areas of the uh, sort of different points of the journey, um, it gives you a much bigger picture and it allows you to use that information to um, change what you do and to direct how you um, improve things. Hope that makes sense. As always, let me know. If not, I'll keep checking back uh, in the comments. Hello to those of you watching live. Lovely to see a few people. Hey, Wendy. Nice to see you. Uh, I've done that thing, that clever trick of um, sharing it into business class. Um, and so I don't think I can necessarily always see all the comments. But um, let me just check. I'm going to just have a look in business class to see if there's any comments in there. Also, I think pausing a bit to do this gives people time to add comments if they have any or questions. Um, do you like my Christmas theme? I was saying at the start that um, I couldn't resist just adding a little bit of Christmas touch to uh, to tonight's uh, workshop. Right, so I hope I hope you like it. Okay, okay, right. Wendy, your comment. Hello, lovely to see you. Never mind that you're late and Wi-Fi problems are unavoidable. Uh, right. OK, so let's move on. So the third thing that you can use um, KPIs for is to identify trends. Now, I'm not going to talk so much about this um, tonight, but I did want to just mention it. Um, so my blog post on Monday um, and this evening, I'm very much going to focus on those first two, which is monitoring your progress and managing your performance. Um, but worth mentioning um, that um, once you um, start to gather more information and you've been measuring things for a, you know, a decent period of time, you can actually then use those figures to identify trends, which again, in turn, helps you to manage your performance. It helps you to um, forecast when things are going to happen and why they're going to happen. Um, and it, it makes your goal setting and your planning um, much more accurate. So you'll remember um, in the previous two weeks when I've been talking about you know, setting your goals and creating your plan. Um, I've talked about how difficult it can sometimes be when you're just starting out because you don't have previous numbers to go on. And so you're very much having to go by either kind of industry wide numbers and kind of research or gut <laughs> and going with your instincts as to what you think you can do. Um, once you've started um, building up this kind of um, analysis and, and building up your metrics, you can then use those um, to be much more accurate. Um, and, and, and by identifying trends, that really helps you. Um, so I just thought that was worth mentioning. 
So let's look now at how you can go about creating KPIs for your own business. So the first step is to go back to your goals, because as we've said, your KPIs is ba are basically there to help you track your progress um, towards your goals. So you need to know what your goals are so that you know what you're tracking. Um, so go back to your goals. Uh, and that is <laughs> where you start. Step two um, is to um, actually identify from your goals um, what your key KPIs are going to be. And by that, I mean the kind of really obvious ones, like the ones that I've mentioned earlier. So in the example where the goal was to increase um, your email list, uh, that the key, key KPI would be your number of subscribers. Um, and that's the kind of obvious one that tells you whether you're hitting your goal or whether you're on track to hit your goal or not. Um, so I've put in brackets the ones that monitor your progress. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Give me a shout. If not, let me know in the comments uh, and I will explain better. But hopefully that makes sense. Step three is to identify your performance management KPIs. So again, going back to that example I gave, your key KPI would be the um, number of subscribers that you have. Your performance management KPIs would be those other measures that you're taking. So um, the number of people viewing your blog posts, the number of people clicking from your blog post to your landing page, and the number of people who then subsequently sign up. So that gives you that journey and it gives you that kind of um, you can kind of see the whole process and you can break down where things are going right and where things are going wrong. Um, so it's a question of whatever your goal is, kind of tracking it back. So your goal is the end point. And to identify your performance management KPIs, it's a case of working backwards from there and seeing the steps that you're putting in place. So really looking at that plan that you created last week um, and identifying the key points that you need to measure to make sure that you're staying on track and to identify where any problem issues, where any problems are. Um, so hope that makes sense. Let me know if not. Step four. So once you've actually identified the things that you're going to measure, you need to set some time scales um, in a similar way to what you know, goals needing to be sort of time based. Um, your KPIs need to be as well. So you need to know, um, OK, how often are you going to measure things? How often do you need to track your progress? Um, how often are you going to review? Um, and that's a case, you know, that will often, often be down to you and your business and how you prefer to work. Um, but for example, um, if, your, if your end goal um, is for the next month, then you probably want to be reviewing your progress at least once a week. Um, maybe more often. Um, again, it will depend on, on you and, and what the goal is and how you work in your business, but you'll find the right pattern. But you need to set some time scales so that you are reviewing those goals and you're setting up milestones to monitor that progress. Because if you're not doing that and you're only measuring at the end point, then there's no real point in measuring because all you're going to discover then is, oops, you know, I've not hit my goal and it's too late to do anything about it. Whereas if you've measured at week one and you've already seen there that you're veering off track and there's something not quite working, you've got plenty of time still to make those tweaks and to kind of adjust things and, and get yourself back on track. Um, so set those milestones, set regular periods where you're going to check and review um, your KPIs. <laughs> Which, which takes me to, to step number five, which is to review your results. So again, there, there's no point in measuring this stuff if you're not actually then going to review the results um, and do something about it. So um, make sure that you're not just measuring stuff, jotting numbers down and kind of going, oh, that's interesting, and then moving on to whatever your next job is. Don't make this a tick box exercise. This, is, this can be really powerful for your business, but only if you actually do something with it which leads me nicely to my final point, which is to take action. So you need to understand what it is you're going to measure. Um, you need to track back that entire journey so that you can see each point um, of the journey and identify at which stage things might be going wrong if they are going wrong. You need to give yourself time scales and a regular point at which you're going to um, check back and, and look at those figures. Um, you need to review them properly and then you need to take action. So if something is going wrong, what are you going to do about it? Um, and make sure that that process is seen all the way through to the end, because if any of those stages are missed out, your KPIs become pointless. Um, so you need each of those stages. You need to see it through to the end. And if you do that, then it is a really powerful tool.
So I hope that helps you. I hope it all made sense. Um, do let me know. If not, you can either pop a comment in, in this, um, send me an email, whichever you prefer, uh, and I will happily um, go into a bit more detail um, if necessary. Um, but also take a look at the blog post um, that I published on Monday because that goes into more detail and kind of lays out the um, examples in a bit more detail as well. Um, so let me just check back, see how we're getting on. That's annoying. It's telling me I've got two comments, but it isn't showing me. Um, let's see if they're in here. It's all being a bit slow. Ah, oh, Wendy. Yes, love the background. I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun. It's Christmas after all. <laughs> OK, so I'm not seeing any questions. So um, if you do come up with any questions, if you're kind of going back and looking at the blog post and you stop, you, you know, you discover you're not sure about something, um, then I do have a Q&A happening uh, tomorrow in my Facebook group business class. Um, and that's also at 630 BST. Um, now, tomorrow's Q&A um, will be the last Q&A of this year. Uh, and so it will be a kind of general Q&A about any of the topics that we've covered. Um, so anything that you're um, related to your business, feel free to come and ask questions um, in tomorrow's session. Um, and I will do my best to answer them for you. Um, also worth repeating, um, and I've mentioned this in the previous two sessions um, last week and the week before, um, I offer 20 minute startup strategy sessions. Um, they are one to one and they are just $14.99, although the price is going up in January. Um, so if you are currently going through the process of goal setting, planning, um, setting up your KPIs, whatever it may be, um, and you feel like a quick chat one-to-one -one, um, would help you um, get some focus, get things sorted, um, you know, sort out any things, you, you know, that you're a bit doubtful about, um, then book your session in. Um, and any sessions booked before um, the end of this year um, will be at that price. Um, anything after that um, will be at the new price, um, which um, will be um, $24.99. So get in early um, for the cheaper price. Um, so we'll have the 20 minute chat. You'll then get a full recording of the session um, and any feedback. Um, you'll get action points and any feedback. Um, if you want to then sort of come back to me once you've completed those action points, I'll give you I'll give you my feedback on that as well. Um, so I'll pop a link if you want to book one of those. I'll pop a link in the comments. And then next week, we won't be having a session. I am publishing a blog post. So next week's blog post is all about creating your editorial calendar. Um, and I've created a really comprehensive guide um, as to how you can create an editorial calendar and really get your content planned um, up front. It is such a helpful thing to do. And it makes a huge difference in um, the amount of time you spend you know, on content, which sometimes can be far too long. You know, oftentimes the majority of time that you spend is creating content and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so um, definitely check out that post. Um, but I won't be doing one of these workshops because it's Christmas week and I'm taking the week off. Um, that said, if you read the post and you have questions, do feel free to email me. So that's coming up next week. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Um, I hope you get time to relax. I hope you get time to spend with your family and your loved ones. And I shall see you in the new year. Happy Christmas. Bye.